Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using some products from Neat and Tangled. This is the Awesome Die Set, as well as the Coordinating Awesome Stamp Set. I'm first going to take apart these two dies. This die set is really kind of fun. It has the word awesome, but then it also has the outer shape of the word. So you can use these together or apart. You can be really creative with how you use these dies. So first I'm going to do some watercoloring and instead of using watercolor paper today, I'm going to be using some Bristol paper. This is from Strathmore and I picked it up at my local art store. And I've never really used Bristol paper before, especially when it comes to watercoloring because usually I'm all about the watercolor paper. But my friend Julie Ebersall, and I'll link to some of her videos up here, she does a lot of videos for the Ellen Hudson YouTube channel, as well as some on her own. But I'll link to the Ellen Hudson channel up here just because she loves this Bristol paper and uses it all the time. She swears by it. And after my experience with the Bristol paper today, I can see why. So I'm going to be using my Gansai Tombi watercolors today. I've pulled out three colors, kind of an aqua, more of a navy and then a bright yellow and I'm like I said before I'm going to be watercoloring on top of this Bristol paper now you've heard me say in the past I really recommend using watercolor paper anytime that you're going to be doing some watercoloring but I have seen Julie use this for watercoloring this Bristol paper and I really loved how it looked so with that in mind I thought I would go ahead and try this today in the back of my mind as I'm watercoloring, I'm remembering to not go over each area multiple times. I'm trying to not be real fussy about it because I know it's not a paper that is meant for moisture or for water. So I want to make sure that I don't add too much moisture all at once, which would result in the paper breaking down and starting to tear or become really sticky and kind of mealy. You want to make sure that you don't add too much uh, moisture on top. This is kind of the same idea as when you use a blender pen on top of regular cardstock. As long as you don't go over it too many times, the paper should be just fine. I took that same mentality with this watercoloring. I wanted to make sure that as I watercolor that I didn't stay in one area too long, kept it moving, and if I wanted to add more color, I needed to dry it first and then add color on top. And that's exactly what I did here. You'll notice I used my heat tool just to zap this with a little bit of heat to speed up the drying process, and then I came in with some additional colors. So the thing I noticed with this Bristol paper, especially with watercolor, is it dries really fast, which is kind of neat because I wanted some of those beautiful, harsh lines that you can get with watercolor. And with Bristol paper, you get those harsh lines right away. It's There's no waiting for it to happen. It's, it's great for those who are impatient like me and want that fun, kind of ethereal watercolor look without having to wait for it to happen on its own or to speed along the process with the heat tool. I also let some water droplets fall down onto the surface here. I purposely tapped it with a pencil, the brush, um, letting the brush drop those paint drops down, or I put it on the edge of an acrylic block and splattered the paint on there. So I'm going to use my paper towel and dab up some of those bigger water droplets or paint droplets, and then I'll use my heat tool to heat this once again. I also wanted to mention that I didn't use my heat tool very much on this paper. I wasn't sure how it would hold up to the heat, so I tried to keep my heat tool moving quite a bit as I was drying it. So now I'm going to do some die cutting, and I've got my watercolor piece here and then the outer shape of that word awesome. And I'm going to place that onto my Sizzix Big Shot machine. And just because I want to make sure that everything's lined up just right and so that word awesome isn't tilted or looking a little funny, I placed that center die on there just long enough to get placement. And then I removed it and ran that through my Big Shot machine. This is going to give me the outer shape of the word. And then I'll be able to later die cut the center area of the word or the actual word. And I can put that in the middle. So you can see how cleanly that cut. This Bristol paper went through like butter. It cut the dye really, really easy. I didn't have to run it through a second time. So now I'm gonna take some glitter paper from American Crafts. I'm using the black shade for this card today. And I thought it would just be really fun to have some sparkle on the card. And I also chose the black shade because I wanted it to be really uh, contrasting with the soft colors of the watercolor. 
I'm running this through my Big Shot machine twice because I wasn't sure how that intricate dye would do with that glitter paper. It actually did really well. The only part that I struggled with was removing it from this little tiny dye. I did have to use my Tim Holt craft pick to really give myself enough leverage to pull that out without tearing it. You can see how pretty it is and how that sparkles with all of that glitter. I think it looks really amazing and it would be great if you wanted to use it on your own outside of that outer shape as well. I took the black glitter paper and cut off a strip that I'm going to use at the top of the card. And I also cut off the very top of my watercolor piece so that I could have that black glitter paper showing underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that down. My card base is actually made out of some more Bristol paper. Since I had to take that entire sheet out of the pad and I only used a small portion, I decided to use the other portion of that sheet and create the card base. This also makes it so that it is the same shade as my watercolor piece and I don't have any um, inconsistencies when it comes to the white shades on the card. I'm adding a little bit of Tombow Extreme Adhesive right at the fold on the card and I'm going to place down that strip of glitter paper. By the way, this card is five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter tall. So I scored that at four and a quarter to create a top folding landscape card. I'm now going to take that watercolor piece and add a bunch of foam adhesive on the back. I was not shy at all adding all the foam on the back. And this came in handy in a little bit and I'll tell you why. So I uh, lined up that foam piece or the foam taped piece with the watercolor on it with the bottom of the card and then press that down. Now I'm going to take that uh, awesome word die and or actually before I get to that I'm going to put some foam underneath this little tiny itty bitty piece on the die cut area. So I want to make sure that that little spot didn't get pulled away or kind of mangled when I put it in an envelope to send to my recipient. So now I'm taking that awesome die word and I'm adding some Ranger multimedia mat on the back. And while using some tweezers to hold it, I'm gently placing it inside that die cut area. Because I'm using a liquid adhesive to adhere this, it gives me a little bit of time to kind of smush that die cut around and manipulate it into the perfect area. It makes it so I can get placement just right. This was a good thing because I did need to kind of manipulate it a little bit to make sure that it fit inside that die cut area perfectly. So now I've taken some pretty pink posh sequins and I'm adding that down to the area around the word. I'm using my tweezers to pick up the sequins, put down a dab of multimedia mat with my left hand, and then putting the sequin down. Uh, I have a quilled precision tip on top of my multimedia mat bottle. So I'll have that link down below if you want to get that for your multimedia. It's a great thing to have because you get precision placement. So at this point, I realized, um, hello, you forgot to actually stamp the rest of the greeting. <laughs> so I thankfully, I had added a bunch of foam underneath that die cut area and I was able to stamp right over top without any problems. I really took a chance. I wasn't sure if there'd be enough foam under that area, but thankfully there was enough and I got a really good stamped impression. I really wouldn't recommend doing this order of things most of the time. In this case, I think I was extremely lucky that it still worked out. And I did have to move one sequin a little off to the side, but it worked out in the end. That's the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really think this card is awesome seems like a fitting description. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next card video. Mm -hmm.